Hyperion by Dan Simmons is a book I wanted to check out after reading The Terror. Uh, I only checked out The Terror because it's uh, based off a really good show on AMC. And I found out he wrote some science fiction books in the 80s. Uh, and this one won the Hugo Award. So that means something. I think the Hugo Award is for good science fiction. So that's definitely the thing that made me want to read it. Hyperion takes place in the future where um, the universe is all connected by the world web. All the different planets are connected via, via data lines and uh, portals called Farcasters. And essentially Hyperion is a planet in which um, there are ancient things there where um, there's also an uh, ancient being of sorts and it's a mystery. It's an eternal mystery. No one knows what the time tombs are or what the Shrike is. It's like this massive metallic creature with four arms blazing red eyes that can literally control time. So a lot of people try to go to Hyperion, but it's blocked off. And so this book focuses on the last pilgrimage to Hyperion. So in order, the, the rumor has it is if you send seven people to the um, time tombs, you can ask for a wish from the Shrike. Six of the seven will die and one survives and gets that wish. So the book focuses on these seven characters. Uh, the main character being the consul. He's a sort of like, not, not, he's a sort of senator, high position politician of sorts. He's the main character, and uh, he goes on this ship to meet the other six. And uh, the book is mainly comprised of six uh, short stories, basically of the backstories of all these different characters. Now, this storytelling technique is really unique. If it's done wrong, it can be a total disaster. An example would be the movie Puzzle. It's a Korean crime thriller like Reservoir Dogs, where each character gets their own 10 to 20 minute flashback, but it felt like filler. Uh, however, Hyperion does a good job of developing all these characters by making the stories interesting. So the first one is a priest of sorts, and he goes on a pilgrimage to find this small native tribe, and he gets involved in that, very similar to Speaker of the Dead by um, the writer of Ender's Game. Very similar themes and uh, story. And then there's uh, the second story is a military action story with a soldier. That was a very exciting. The third one's about a um, hedonistic poet uh, who grew up poor. And it's about sort of like the, uh, the, the endurance of uh, celebrity and of uh, selling out. A, a sort of viewpoint of the artist. The fourth story is about a common man with a health problem that he has to overcome. And uh, they skip forward a few stories. Uh, near the end, another character, she's a private detective who has a sort of noir story. However, that story felt weird because it turns into a full-on like Michael Bay on crack action story. Very similar to the soldier story. I didn't like that. They should have tried to go for the straight up noir sort of uh, aspect. It was very ghost in the shell, but just too much action, I felt. And uh, so most of the book, is, I think it's like 500 pages, is of, comprised of these uh, backstories. And then the book ends. Yep. This uh, Hyperion doesn't have an ending because it's book one in the series. So after seven stories, you get nothing because the book one ends. That's pretty much it. And that's the biggest flaw with Hyperion. I didn't like have trouble reading all the different storylines because they're all very interesting, but it's a character development book. It's the equivalent of introducing, you know, a heist film and all the people in the heist film and why they want to rob a bank and then not showing the heist. Just ending it being like, we'll see it in the second film. No, that's not a good um, way to write a book. You don't just have an entire book for character development and then have nothing, no payoff for anything at the end of the book. The book just ends abruptly. That really pissed me off because I, I was, you know, getting in there. Now I have to go read the second book, but you need to give a little bit more than just straight up, uh, oh, we're here now, the end. And there is a big twist at the end, so I, I guess that was interesting, but... I just didn't like the fact that it's trying to sell the second book immediately. I, I absolutely despise it when a book tries to, the first book especially, doesn't give you a full story and is just there to try to sell more books. The Maze Runner books do this. It literally ended on a cliffhanger. I did not like that. So Hyperion is a pretty interesting read. However, it's one of those books where you have to read, probably end up reading all four. There are four books in the... Uh, 
Hyperion series, uh, Hyperion, then the rise of Hyperion, then Endymion, and then the fall of Endymion or whatever it's called. So I will see you around when I read book two, but book one is a good read. However, it's one of those commitments. You're going to have to read all four probably. Wait, I have to, um, I have another thing to talk about. Uh, sometimes the book is a little pretentious when it comes to its world building. There's a lot of technology and terminology in places, really rich mythology of all this stuff happening. However, it doesn't give you a chance to catch up and I, it really pissed me off. It is the equivalent of an alien coming to Earth and you're in China and you go, oh yeah, that's the Great Wall. You know the Great Wall, right? You know, you know Tiananmen Square, right? You know about you know Asian food, right? And the alien will probably just sit there and go like, I don't know any of this because I just got here. The book does the exact same thing to you. It starts mentioning all these like, uh, oh, like this planet has like all this stuff and this stuff and this stuff and you haven't been introduced to that planet yet so you don't know about that and it just leaves you lost. This happens at least 30 times in the book. It tries to spout off all these places that hasn't been introduced yet. I don't know what the point of that is but the book does that a lot too so I hope they don't do that too many in the next books but that's what I felt about Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Fall of Hyperion is the sequel to Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Um, as I stated in my earlier review that Hyperion isn't a complete story really, it's mostly set up. Uh, it's basically just a collection of backstories for all the main characters. This book, however, is the payoff that you've been waiting for. If you've read Hyperion and you want to see what happens next, this book delivers. It is an ambitious, sprawling sci-fi epic. It introduces so many elements. However, it is able to balance it all. Even though there's like the perspective changes between like government people and the sky and the pilgrims and basically all the different little um, aspects here and there, it manages to balance all of it quite well. And it just keeps going until the big finale. It kept me riveted from beginning to end. Uh, the only downside about this book is that you have to read uh, Hyperion before to get the sort of, it's almost like it is a sequel in the sense that you have to read something before it. So it's not something that you can just pick up and read. You, you could easily pick up the fall of Hyperion and just read it, but you won't get the full effect of the backstory of all the characters. That's the only downside of the book. That you, there's a prerequisite in order to enjoy it a little bit more. Other than that though, the book is just, it's really ambitious. That's the one thing. It's uh, Usually when you think of sci-fi, you think of like certain things. This book does deliver like sci-fi science battles, laser battles, and like things like that, but also a little bit more. And I like that a lot. And uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed the fall of Hyperion and I definitely um, recommend it.